Before we get into this video, I just want to let you guys know that every single deck profile by me from here on out will now have either a combo tutorial or test hand, so be on the lookout for every single one at the end of the video. Light Swords are a pretty ancient deck. They're an artifact. They're a myth, a legend. How do you guys know that? Well, because this deck is exactly 10 years old, making its debut in the American shores in May of 2008. Light Sworn have passed the judgment, the test of time, and are still a very relevant deck coming into June 2018. I'm the Cali Effect, and if you guys want to see more videos like this, then go ahead and destroy that subscribe button. But more importantly, shed a little light on that notification bell, because, well, we're just too strong. Get it? Light destruction, light of destruction, because that's where the light swords came from. I want to give a shout out to all of my Patreons. Without you, you guys, or I'm sorry, without you, this video would not exist. Also, a really big shout out to my man, Veva Parsa, really huge fan of mine that actually is a part of the Patreon and requested this deck. If you guys would like to request a deck, then Patreon is the way to go to get a guaranteed shot of if not the deck profile on this channel, then you will be sent a personal deck profile for you. Without further ado, I present to you a competitive Light Sworn deck profile for this format. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so looking into the stats of Light Sworn, their attack power is pretty outrageous. A lot of the Light Sworn monsters are really strong, allowing you to beat over almost any threat. If your opponent does drop a monster uh, sub under 3,000, then Light Sworns really don't have a problem with taking care of it. And if they can't take care of it monster attack wise, then they probably could blow it up through the means of Judgment Dragon and just a plethora of other cards. This deck also has a huge recovery, the ability to abuse that graveyard like no other. I think this deck is really powerful. I want to say only second to zombies in recovery. I want to say that this deck can top a regional level event and can do it pretty easily because uh, we try to fix the consistency issues for this deck uh, uh, going through multiple rounds and I think I found a really good formula. So let's start with the deck profile. For the monsters, we run quite a bit. I'm going to break it up a little bit. Uh, one copy of Judge Mint Dragon. Now, uh, there's a lot of Light Sworn enthusiasts that would swear that multiple copies of Judgment Dragon is a great idea and i'm here to tell you guys why it isn't opening judgment dragon is the biggest brick in the world so you would play multiple copies of judgment dragon to open those multiple copies of judgment dragon and not be able to use them for their effects being able to spell some of them to your side of the field and destroy your opponent's board even more importantly opening multiple copies of judgment dragon and going first and still being able to summon judgment dragon is a waste of Judgment Dragon and its utility. It's a really good card for wiping your opponent's board, putting pressure on your opponent, and being a 3,000 attack monster. Now, this deck does play well enough uh, Light Swarms to play multiple copies of Judgment Dragon, but I think one is where it should be. Next is three copies of the best Light Sworn, hands down. Three copies of Wolf Light Sworn Beast, and this card is really good because anytime it's sent from the decks of the graveyard, it can special summon itself to the side of the field. Now, this is the only Light Sworn monster that we run three copies of, and you guys are like, oh, you're not running three copies of Raiden? This guy would be the best Light Sworn if it weren't for a couple of things. So, the first thing is that his effect is a hard once per turn. Secondly, um, our normal summon is kind of reserved for other cards. I don't necessarily always want to summon Raid into my side of the field and then just do Raid in things because two cards isn't always enough. I want to be able to further my combo. I'm not saying Raid in is a bad card, but I think two is a really sweet spot for this level four Warrior Tuner. He's just a really good card overall. Next, we play two copies of Felice Navidad. This card I have sworn to, get it? Because they're light swords. And the reason why this is so powerful is because it's just like Wolf. When it's sent from the deck to the graveyard, unlike Wolf, it has to be through a monster effect. You can special summon this card to your side of the field. Now, the reason why we run so many copies of sin cards from the deck to the graveyard to special summon is because they do so well in this deck. We have the ability to send multiple cards from our deck to our graveyard and start spamming out these monsters to our side of the field. So we want to take advantage of that by running this many copies. Now, uh, beforehand, I was running one Felice and three Wolf, and you guys could get away with that if you're not, uh, you know, 100% confident on this lineup. But I think this lineup is preferred because that beast warrior part actually does come up a lot and i need to get to it as fast as possible one copy of lumina light sworn summoner i was running two copies of this card 
and I don't think it's a bad card. My biggest problem with Lumina is like all other Light Sworns other than Wolf and Felice, they require your normal summon. Not only that, Lumina is pretty searchable. It's easily to be recursed back into your hand, so it's not a bad card. It's just a card that I don't always want to open. Another thing I want to talk to you guys about Lumina is just like Judgment Dragon opening Lumina and no Light Sworn monsters in your graveyard could be pretty problematic. I didn't want to see that with two Luminas in my deck. Next is one copy of Lumina Twilight Sworn Shaman. This card is... It's pretty freaking insane. So once you start banishing your Light Sword monsters with Fairy Tale Snow, this card says, hey, I can bring those banished monsters back to my side of the field for almost no cost. I mean, I can banish a Light Sword monster from my graveyard if that's what you really consider a cost. These two monsters work really well in tandem with each other, bringing out multiple Light Sword monsters to your side of the field. And also when a Light Sword monster's effect is activated while it's on the field, you can send three cards from your deck to your graveyard. So it does have an effect to mill on your turn, which is really important. One copy of... Of Minerva and this is gonna wrap, wrap up all of the light swarms now Minerva is I like to call it my secret tech so first of all we run actually I used to run enough light swarm monsters in the main board now I don't but we run one two three four five uh, plus Minerva and um, the Michael which would make seven so unfortunately I don't run enough light swarms to actually be able to summon her to search the judgment dragon I'm thinking about running Raikou back in this deck and if you guys want to run uh, not just a regular Raikou Raikou Twilight Sworn I wouldn't put it past you just to have that nifty effect of normal summon this and be able to search the judgment dragon but she's really good because when she's sent from the hand or deck to the graveyard you get to send in an additional card from your deck to your graveyard and I'm telling you guys that additional card actually does come up a lot just having a fourth card or a third card or even a second card sit from your deck to your graveyard is just awesome it's a really good card um it's also a level three monster so it allows me to tutor for my rank three plays that's it for all of the light sworn monsters um there are a couple of other good light sworn monsters uh lila lila twilight sworn um raiko twilight sworn like i said and gareth I decided not to play those is because I feel like we're in a format where back row isn't as heavy, so Lila and Twilight Sworn Lila aren't that great. Especially since Sky Strikers, uh, pure Sky Strikers, want to play the field spell card, which gains effects when it's destroyed, and their other spell card that remains physical until isn't that great. I just felt that there were better options, and I really wanted to get into my Light Sworn cards fast and easy. Um, I didn't want to waste my summon on those cards. On the next set of monsters, this is the bosses of the deck. Three copies of Orbital Hydralander. Um, I, when I was going through this deck, I was finding a hard time figuring out a really good win condition for this deck until I came across Orbital Hydralander. Um, basically, you can spell summon this card by having five monsters with different names in your graveyard to your side of the field. It is really easy to do that. It is it is dumb easy in the way that this deck is built to be able to spell summon Orbital Hydralander to your side of the field. Um, furthermore, you can send the top three cards from your deck to your graveyard to destroy a card on the field if you have at least two monsters in your graveyard to activate his effect and none of the monsters are on the same or at the same name at the resolution of this card's effect so it works extremely well with fairy tale snow normally when you have orbital hydralander and fairy tale snow on your side or in uh, monster on your side of the field and in the graveyard um it's gonna be really hard for your opponent to break your finishing boards you either like have a curious an omega something like that to really put pressure on your opponent and then have orbital hydralander and uh fairy tale snow to flip your opponent's cards face down and destroy their cards they work really well in tandem to be honest i don't like three copies of fairy tale snow in this deck but it's just i mean i can't uh risk not seeing this card in a game uh, that's it for the big boss monsters. We play a couple of other support cards. Two copies of Perform Mage Hat Tricker. Um, this card's pretty good. It allows you to extend your combos. Um, this deck is actually built for going first and going second. So when we go second, we can get an additional summon, quote unquote, through Perform Mage Hat Tricker to our side of the field. And it's an Earth monster. So it works really well for making Notoria Beast on our first turn plays. One copy of Trick Clown. This card is also really good when it's sent from the deck to the graveyard, especially summon itself to the side of the field. And then it combos really well with Perform Mage Damage Juggler. Um, both of these cards can be searched off of Damage Juggler just being in the graveyard. So these cards work really well with the Light Sworn Engine. Uh, that's it for those monsters. Next, we have two copies of Goblin Bird. This card is nutty good, being an Earth Warrior monster. So it works really well for when we make the Notoria Beast. Of course, we do run the Glow Bulb because that's actually how we make the Notoria Beast. Worst case scenario, Glow Bulb is a monster to provide us to our side of the field to link off. Um, what I found really amazing about this deck is that making Curious 
is interesting like you only need three monsters with different names so goblin berg plus gold bulb you summon the berg then you can summon the gold bulb and then you can spell summon the hat tricker and then that's your curious making the curious through light monsters or earth monsters is made pretty easy within this deck um also there's another monster that's an earth monster that can summon itself relatively fast and that's giant rex when it's banished it stuffs them back to the side of the field it works really well with fairy tale snow that's it for the main monsters we do play hand traps two copies of droll and lock blurred and two copies of ash blossom and joyous spring if you guys cannot afford these cards um effect veilers and ghost ogres would be decent substitutes uh for these cards the reason why i play these cards um in particular is because they are the best hand traps in the game uh ash blossom and joyous spring stops uh, searches and droll and lock stops your opponent from continuing off the search so it allows you to slow your opponent down so you can follow up to break your opponent board and it's really good for going second that's it for the monsters let me get you into the spells i'm telling you guys man this deck is the light if it ever was a way to shine then it's right here guys no pun intended no pun intended okay ladies and gentlemen on to the spells sometimes i like to charge myself all the way up before I go in for the kill, so three copies of Charge of the Light Brigade. Oh my god, if there was ever a brigade for your opponent to witness, when this card is activated, you send the top three cards from your deck to the graveyard as cost. Literally, if it stopped right there, it would still be an amazing card. But the fact that it can add one Light Sworn monster from your deck to your hand just is icing on the cake. The ability to get whatever Light Sworn monster that you want. More often than not, you're going to be able to get Lumina. Um, if you see a Light Sworn monster milled off a Charger Light Brigade, you can get Raiden, a monster that you need to your hand. You can even get a copy or a card for our solar recharges because this card is 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 bananas as well um if there ever was a pot of greed replacement this card is it um it allows you to recharge your hand get it you, you charge all the way up and then you get the recharge making thunder jokes in the light deck anyways so solar recharge at the cost quote unquote of discarding a light sworn monster so your dead wolves felice or minerva's you get to draw two cards and then send the top two cards from your deck to your graveyard only fueling your strategy these six cards i feel is why light sworn are so strong because they are unlimited and they allow you to dig deeper into your strategy while providing you um you know resources in the graveyard so that's it for those six cards two cards called by the grave Hand traps are actually really uh, disruptive to the opponent or for you uh, from the opponent. And actually, while I'm here by Call by the Grave, you guys actually may have noticed that I don't play Brilliant Fusion. I don't play Prayer Plant or for Scorpios. I don't play Heroic Challenger, Thousand Blades, and I don't play Brilliant Fusion. Let me actually explain that to you guys right now. So going through this deck, I realized that Light Sworn's biggest problem was inconsistency. And drawing cards like Predaplant, Orphis, Scorpio, uh, with no monsters in hand, granted that doesn't happen often, but drawing Darlings and Gorbos, milling off your Gym Knight Garnets, is just really problematic. And you, we all do it, as a Light Sworn player, we do it for the Gym Knight Summon, or for the Seraph Knight Summon, so we have to hope that we have two monsters that we want to summon to our side of the field. It just was really, really bad. Uh, drawing Brilliant Fusions after you've already resolved your Seraph Knight, it's just a whole bunch of bricks, if you ask me. Now, you guys could play the Lone Fire Engine. I've seen a lot of players actually doing that to get deeper into the combos or get into that combo as fast as possible. But it really took up a lot of space. And I felt that there were so many ways or so many cards out right now that made the Brilliant Fusion Engine just really susceptible. So I decided not to play it. And I actually have had quite a bit of success with this deck. Um, I'm going to show you guys some test hands. You guys are going to be amazed that even without Brilliant Fusion, this deck can make some plays. And that's why it's built in this particular way. One copy of Gold Sarcophagus. This is to banish the giant Rex um, to, you know, to get it to your side of the field for free. You can consequently also banish another Light Sworn monster uh, to trigger off Lumina. One Foolish Burial. Uh, <laughs> this deck's built on sending cards from the deck to the graveyard. I shouldn't have to say anything else after that. Monster Reborn. That's additional plays. Um, a Soul Charge is also another extender. So right now you guys are seeing 41 cards. I actually made it 44 and play three copies of evenly matched in the main board because I've noticed a lot with Light Sworn going second is a pain. That's also another thing with Brilliant Fusion. Going second with Brilliant Fusion, ugh, it's just not bad. And this is actually what I took out the Brilliant Fusion to specific for because evenly matched allows me or puts my opponent in a really bad position. Yes, I have to give them a battle phase, but still, I'm gonna make a board after that. They even negate the evenly matched, and I follow up with cards like Judgment Dragon, uh, Orbital Hydralander. Um, there, there's so many other follows-ups I can do can break my opponent's board 
or if they don't have the board breaker and evenly match wipes their board then we are on a roll now for the people that can't afford evenly match go ahead and play the kaiju engine i actually do side them interrupted jizakiru kamungus and gamma seal you can play all four of those make it a 45 card deck or cut off what you wish i just think evenly match is really good in this deck and i play three copies because i kind of want to see it if i'm going second if i mill it off it is what it is and another thing is that this deck has no defense you summon a whole bunch of monsters to your side of the field and your opponent can wipe that board relatively easy they won't be able to kill all of your life points because of fairy tale snow but then that's when you follow up with evenly match it's essentially the gores of the deck if you guys remember light swarm back in the day when we used to play gores this is your new age gores uh so that's it for the main board uh let's get you into this side deck or this extra deck my apologies starting off with the egg seeds this monster will leave your opponent exalted and ready to throw in the towel get it exalt exhaust it like it okay two copies of minerva the exalted light sword this card's extremely powerful for the deck um i also love that it is a fairy monster there are so many times where i summon lumina i have a wolf in the graveyard and like a trick clown and and a wolf and i make minerva and minerva just sends off another wolf or felice and so now i end up with a lumina felice and a minerva minerva's a fairy lumina's a spellcaster uh felice is a beast warrior so then you go ahead and you make curious and that's what this deck can do really well is just find ways to make curious which will set up your win con uh sending fairy tale snow to the graveyard milling additional cards and setting up your orbital hydralander plays so uh minerva is really powerful in this deck also keep in mind you'll be drawing cards and destroying cards uh because we do run a pretty big uh high light sworn count one copy of dante traveler of the burning abyss this actually came up before as well um it mills three cards from the top of your deck to the graveyard it recurs itself back to the deck if you need be but again milling off like trick clown and wolf you have another way to make that minerva again now this did like tempt me to play another uh copy of trick clown because that asshole still works for minerva but i was like ah, i'm not gonna do it not yet um uh, one copy of black rose dragon me and uh team king of games my little bro we were actually talking uh yesterday about this card and he was like this is the dopest card in the game right now it's one of the best cards he was hyping it up he was like this card's like excited night and i was like ah, i wouldn't say excited night but this card is still pretty powerful if your opponent can't stop this card you're probably gonna win because you can blow up their entire board shout out to my little bro team king of games go ahead and give his channel some love link down below in the description one copy of sci-fi lord omega um you actually can make this card quite a bit but i don't go for the double omega mainly because this guy can shuffle himself back into the deck and then there's other cards that you can make with your link plays one copy of michael arc light sworn now this guy is actually not only another light sworn monster but he allows you to get rid of banished cards and shuffle your light sworn monsters back into your deck and give you life points so this card actually could come up in time and then of course notoria beast card's nasty good um if you make it against like sky strikers if you make it against sky striker trick star they'll have a really hard problem uh just dealing with this card because they won't be able to activate their spells uh that's it for the synchros and the x seeds we play quite a bit of links um and keep in mind we're actually free from playing whatever synchros and x seeds we want since we don't have to play the seraphonite so one borlo dragon big and back being boo the best link for in the game uh one copy of nightmare service this card is to destroy spell summon monsters the nightmare phoenix to destroy the opponent's back row the nightmare unicorn to get rid of problematic threats and this card actually has replaced officially gem knight seraph knight one copy of nightmare goblin now nightmare goblin's really good because it replaces uh the fact that we need gem knight seraph knight to do that whole little combo that combo's good don't get me wrong but still uh, i'd rather just make the nightmare goblin and get the normal summon that way and it can discard cards from our hands at the graveyard like trick clown like glow bolt to help extend our combos one copy of underclock taker just a generic a good generic link to i don't make mrs radiant that often but you still have quite a few earth monsters so you, you i still play the mrs radiant and then one copy of curious curious does make eight light swarms uh before the minerva so if you do go through your your michael your curious and your minerva you can summon the minerva and then search the judgment dragon i have to think about it for a second that's it for the extra deck um i really wouldn't change much i guess changeable cards will be the mistress radiant uh the nightmare unicorn uh the nightmare phoenix and cerebus uh, i wouldn't change the underclock taker the goblin or the curious you guys can change it however you guys wish of course it's your deck profile or your deck do whatever you want from there um that is it from the extra deck let me get you guys to the next portion which is the side deck 
starting off, we do run two copies of Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion, as well as two copies of Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. Now, my boy Jesse J. Roberts, uh, he hit me up and he asked me a really good question. He was like, what does Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion stop that DD Crow can't? And I had to sit there and think there for a second. I was like, nothing. Like, at least not right now. So that actually might be a um, really good video a little later. Like, I have to sit there and think, what does DD Crow can't stop? Or what does Ghost Bell stop that DD Crow in this meta right now? And I couldn't think of anything. So you guys could play the DD Crows, um, at least for right now. And if you're already main boarding the Ghost Ogres and Snow Rabbits, uh, Mistaken Arrest is a card that I don't play in here and you guys could play. Um, now, we do run that Kaiju Engine, so Gamma Seal, Kamungus, and Jizakuru. Again, you guys can run Effect Veilers. You can run really whatever you want here um, for those four cards. Uh, uh, Mistaken Arrest, Effect Veilers. Um, I can't really think of anything else right now off the top of my head, but I'm a 1,000% sure you guys below in the comment section will be able to tell us what we could run as substitutes for budget options. One copy of Regeki for board clearance, uh, three copies of Twin Twisters for back row destruction, and then three copies of this card is just awesome. Shared ride allows me to draw into whatever I need. Now that I've shown you guys the main deck, sideboard, and extra deck, let's show you guys some test hands to confirm that this deck is too strong. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so starting off with our test hand, we're going to be uh, opening with some really good hands. I'm pretty excited to show off this deck. Now, uh, I feel like it's really explosive. It's going to give us something really good. I've, I've been doing quite a bit of test hands with myself before I decided to do the deck profile as well as testing. Uh, just overall, in general, uh, good things with this deck. So opening up, Radiant Hand of Light Sworn, evenly matched, Jolin Lockbird, Solar Recharge, and Orbital Hydra Lander. Now going second, we have uh, evenly matched to Disrupt our opponent and Jolin Lockbird. I'm going to go ahead and open up with Solar Recharge, discarding the Raiden to draw two cards. So we're going to draw Gold Sarcophagus and Soul Charge, and then we're going to send Giant Rex, a card that I don't want to send, and Feliz Navidad. That card's not going to do anything. Um, really interesting what I can do, because now I can follow up with the Soul Charge play and start going off. I don't necessarily want to do that, but we don't really have a choice in this hand. It's not the best hands, but I'm not here to show you only the best hands. We're just here to show you guys some hands. So I'm going to Soul Charge for three. We're going to bring out the Raiden, the Rex, and the Felice. Then I'm going to use Raiden's effect to send two additional cards from my deck to my graveyard. And next, I'm going to go ahead and... Ooh, I'm going to exceed summon with the Giant Rex and the Raiden. So that's going to go ahead and make Minerva Light Sworn. So we need a Trick Clown from our deck to our graveyard. Will we get it? I'm going to detach the Giant Rex. And then we're going to send three cards. Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Charge the Light Brigade and Orbital Hydralander. We didn't get it, but we have one, two, three, four, five monsters in our graveyard, so we can summon the Orbital Hydralander to our side of the field, um, and that's pretty much it. Orbital Hydralander does have a negation effect or a destruction effect. We have the Drolin Logbird and the Evenly Match. Now, again, this isn't the best of the best of the hands. I actually get a destruction. That'll be pretty cool. This isn't the best of the best, but it's still what this deck can do uh, and still have negations through Joel and Lockbird and evenly match to rule my opponent's day. Minerva sent to the graveyard. It's going to mill additional three cards. So Minerva, Wolf, and oh my God, that is the best mill ever to destroy three cards. Or even if I use it to draw three cards, we're in the game. It doesn't really matter from there. And keep in mind, look at this. Wolf will be summoned to our side of the field. None of the monsters that we milled were copies, not a single one. That's something that this deck does do often. So let me show you another test hand. All right, so on to our next test hand, really hoping that we get something good again, something better than the last hand. The last hand wasn't bad. We drew evenly matched, Drolin Lockbird, had an Orbital Hydra Lander on our field. So we got to some pretty good uh, plays there and we can start disrupting our opponent. So on to our next one, Solar Recharge, Raiden Hand of Light Sworn, Perform Age Hat Tricker, perform a chat trigger and soul charge again what are we doing with these test ends go ahead and activate charge of the light brigade discarding raiden drawing orbital hydra lander and call by the grave and then sending perform age trick clown and troll and lock bird trick clown is going to activate its effect to summon itself to our side of the field then i we're going to be forced to normal summon a hat trigger and i don't want to do it but we're going to special summon the second hat trigger using both of these monsters to make our minerva and then Minerva's effect to detach to send three additional cards. So Glow Bulb, Damage Juggler, and Lumina. That actually wasn't good to send the Damage Juggler since we drew 
all of our before mage cards i mean it wasn't necessarily bad but it just wasn't great we have enough monsters to spot summon an orbital hydra lander to our side of the field for free free 3000 monster is never something i'm gonna argue with and there's multiple things we can do we can uh ugh, i'm not sure what i want sorry about that guys you guys should already know my camera problems by now now back to the uh, the game that we were doing i think we're really going to benefit from having soul charge on the field so what i'm actually going to do is set the call by the grave and use the orbital hydra lander to target the face down card to send three cards from the top of my deck to my graveyard the reason why i'm doing this is because by now i feel that my opponent if they had a hand trap they would have stopped it right there uh, the only hand trap that can stop is ghost bell and it's not really seeing enough play but seeing that i actually didn't uh get a second card to the graveyard i'm gonna go ahead and lose the call by the grave uh, all good and dandy i really don't care about losing the call by the grave because we're going to be able to make a board that our opponent just won't be able to stop next i'm going to go ahead and use uh no i don't think i'm gonna use that effect yet right now actually yeah. i'm going to go ahead and use the minerva and the orbital hydra lander for a link summon and this is the exact reason why we played the underclock taker um because now we'll be able to use the glow bulbs effect oh i'm sorry we actually got wolf so now we get to keep the orbital hydra lander and we would have used the wolf to make it now we're going to use the glow bulbs effect to send fairy tale snow that's actually fairly good to special summon uh glow bulb back to our side of the field and then we're going to use the hat tricker and the glow bulb for a synchro summon of notoria beast now um i can continue to make this or this deck even more phenomenal i can make so many more busted plays with the soul charge but I thought it was uh, kind of unfair to draw Soul Charge um, in both games. Like, it, it's a card that you don't want to, like, or it's not a card that you, obviously, you want to draw it. But it's a card that I don't really see drawing all the time. So I'm just going to leave it at this board. Orbital Hydra Lander to destroy cards, milling three cards from my deck to my graveyard. And the ir ironic thing is that I still haven't put two cards with the same name. I would obviously have to use Fairy Tale Snow uh, Effect beforehand because Hat Trickers in the graveyard. Starting off with our starting five, Orbital Hydra Lander, Charger Light Brigade, Orbital Hydra Lander, Fairy Tale Snow, and Charger Light Brigade. I hate drawing Fairy Tale Snow, but I mean, I guess we got to see it. So Charger Light Brigade to mill uh, three cards. So Goblin Lindenberg, Judgment Dragon, and Glow Bulb. And that's going to go ahead and add, we didn't add a Light Swarm monster. I'm a little bit on the fence. I'm going to go ahead and add Raiden from my deck to my hand. I would have loved to mill a Light Swarm monster and then have been able to like get something off of that. Unfortunately, that's not the case i'm going to activate another copy of charge of the life brigade and it's going to be really crazy because now if i mill two additional monsters with different names i'll be able to pop off with some really big combos so our second charge of life brigade wolf solar recharge and raiden that's pretty awesome so now we have four cards in the graveyard a free wolf to our side of the field and we're going to be able to pop off with some combos i'm going to go ahead and normal summon our first raiden and then use that Raiden's effect to send two cards. Evenly matched, we need a monster. And Droll and Lockbird, that is um, enough to summon two Orbital Hydra Landers to our side of the field. Getting Fairy Tail Snow to the graveyard is going to be the hardest part. We're going to use both of these monsters for an Exceed Summon. And that Exceed Summon is going to be for Minerva. Now, the cheap piece of the cake would be to get Fairy Tail Snow in our graveyard. From there on out, this this is just phenomenal. Double Orbital Hydra Lander, Minerva on our side of the field. Let me move that over here. I don't want her over here. Um, you want that. That is just phenomenal. So I'm going to use Ray, Minerva's effect to send Wolf to the graveyard. Uh, yeah, we're going to send Wolf to the graveyard to send three additional cards. So evenly matched. So charge a Light Brigade. And Felice. Felice is going to be able to summon herself. Um, freak it. I'd do it. I'd use both the Minerva and the Raiden for another link summon to make nightmare goblin and then nightmare goblin's effect to pitch the fairy tale snow from our hands to the graveyard now nightmare goblin didn't necessarily serve its purpose but it got us a monster out of the hands of the graveyard and then we're gonna have to follow up uh to use the fairy tale snow to banish one of the raidens to get it to our side of the field but then we can use orbital hydra landers to send one two three 
four, five, six, which are all cards that don't fit this after we get our first uh, fairy tale snow. The first one to be destroyed a fairy tale snow will put it to our graveyard. And then the second one will be able to destroy an opponent's card on their side of the field. This deck is, and then we get the Minerva Mill. This deck is amazing. I'm telling you guys, I really was excited playing this. And I have to thank Varfa for making this deck alive for us, making us, uh, or, you know, giving me the opportunity to profile it for you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching another segment of the Cali Effect. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, subscribe, but most of all, enjoy.